Okay, we are ready to work on Module 3 into Module Project 1, the Hargrove Home Improvement. And we worked a little bit on this in Chapter 2. This is a new document, so make sure you download the new document to work on. I've already got my document downloaded. I've already saved it with the new name that I need, and I am ready to start with Project Step Number 1. And we're going to be helping a gentleman by the name of Jaden Keller fill in these calculations on our worksheet here. And the first thing he wants us to do is enter in the date using the format 5 slash 5 slash 2021. And an easy way to do that is to use the date function. So I'm going to click up here, make B3 my active cell. In my formulas tab, I have date and time. I can click date. The year I want is 2021. Hit my tab key. Month is five. Tab date is five. And click OK. You see now it's 5521. No matter when I open up this document, it's going to, that is the date that's going to appear on the worksheet. Number two, in E5, we're going to insert a formula without using a function that multiplies the on hand D5 by the wholesale price in B5. So we're not going to use a function. We're entering in a formula. So remember, when we do that in Excel, we have to hit the equal key first. So I'm going to hit the equals. And I want the on hand, which is D5, multiply, which is Shift 8. B5. I'm just going to, I'm just clicking, pointing and click, or you can type in D5 asterisk B5. And I'm going to hit on the check mark up here to enter it in. And now I'm ready to copy it down. So I've got my fill handle right here. Get my little cursor looking like a crosshairs there and bring it down to row 15. You can see behind it made everything white and I want it white and green, white and green like it was. So I want to fill it without formatting. So I'm going to go to my auto fills option box here, fill without formatting. And there we go. Number three in F5. So make an F5 my active cell. We want a formula that multiplies the wholesale price by, um, the markup value. So let's look at something first here though. In E5, we put in D5 times B5. When we copied it down, it automatically changed it to D6 times B6. The values are relative to the row or if we were copying it over relative to the column. Well here in our retail price, we're going to want to copy down and we want the retail price to copy down. But our markup is always going to be in L3. So we need to make L3 an absolute value as part of our formula. So to do that, we're going to put dollar sign in front of L and dollar sign in front of the 3 in our formula. So here in our retail price, we're going to say equals. And we want to equal our wholesale price, which is B5 and then Shift-8, and we're going to click in L3, but we want to make that absolute, so we need to put dollar signs. So I'm going to hit the shortcut key, which is F4 on my keyboard, and that's your function key, F4. If you have a laptop, your function keys might do two separate things, so you might have an FN key that you need to hit first to toggle it to be the F4 key on your uh, function row. Or you can just type in dollar sign L dollar sign three. That will work as well. I'm going to hit my check mark to enter it. And now I'm ready to copy this down. And you can see I'm going to have to fill without formatting. But if I look in the first one, it's B5 times absolute value of L3. And here's B6 absolute value of L3. So you can see it's always referring back to L3. If you just type in B9 times L3, it's going to count you wrong because it wants you to use the absolute value uh, option in Excel. So we've 
got our retail price all the way down. Now we want to know how long our plants have been in inventory. So right here in H, we have we know we got our inventory in stock for our rose bush on April 2nd, and we now know it's May 5th. And so we could get a calendar out and count the days, but hey, we've got Excel to do all that for us. So we're going to hit equals, and we want to put in the day we're looking at right now. So that's B3. And B3, where it's not going to change. So that's going to have to be absolute. So I'm going to hit my F4 key minus the day we got it in stock. And that's going to let us know how many days it's been in inventory. Again, you have to make that B3 an absolute value because we're going to be copying it down. I'm going to hit the check mark. It's 33 days. I'm going to copy that down. Go to my autofill options, fill without formatting, and now we know how many days we've had this stuff in inventory. You can see we've had our pansy flats in inventory for 65 days. So we either bought a whole lot of those or they just not selling very well. All right. And we're ready for step number five. And I, we want to know when we need to reorder the plants. If we have 10 or fewer plants on hand, then we want to reorder. So we're going to use a function called the if function. Now the if function looks at the conditions that you set and whether they're true or whether they're false. So if our inventory, if it is less then 10 or equal to 10, then we want to reorder. We use the if function for that. So to enter in a function, we're going to make I5 our active cell. Under our formula, we're going to go to logical and we're going to go to if. So our first test is if our on hand is equal, less than or equal to 10. So our on hand we find in cell D5. And if it is less than, so put our less than icon, equal to 10. If that is true, then we want to display a Y because that yes, we're going to reorder. But if that's not true, then it's going to be an N because we don't want to reorder it. We're just going to say OK. So our rose bush, we have 20 on hand. We don't want to reorder it. So now we can just copy this formula down. Again, fill without formatting, and then we can look right away and say, hey, here are our peonies. We need to reorder because we have less than 10 on hand. And so it just lets us know right here, should we reorder them or not. And that is the if function. OK, so now we're ready for column J, the discount. They put the plants on sale if they've been in, in inventory for 40 days or more, and if the store is not reordering any more plants of that type. They want to get them moved, so they want to get them out of the store, so they want to offer them a discount. So in column J, we are going to use an AND function, because we want to know, have they been in inventory for 40 days or more? And are we ordering them or not? So it has to, the results have to meet both criteria. And that's the AND function. In the AND function, it meets both criteria. Now the IF function, there was just one criteria. For our, our discount, we want two. So we're going to use the AND. So we're going to 
come up here to our logical and pick and so it equals and so our little nice little box pops up here so we can put in the information so if i n or i5 is equal to n and since it's a letter we're going to put per, um, um, oh quotation marks around it so i'm sitting here doing my and quotes here so quotation in close quotation and if h5 so we're going to come up here and say h5 is greater than 40 and we're going to say okay so we're not going to give them a discount we're going to carry that down fill without formatting and you can see the daylilies getting a discount there and the geraniums getting a discount as well as lavender and the hostas so again an and function means they have to be meet both criteria now for column L we are going to display whether a plant is going to be offered at a discount to the garden club and to do that we are going to use an or function because if it, depending upon the quality of the plant and we have our rating quality there in column k if the plant type has an a rating or is being, being reordered to fill inventory, Jaden offers it at a discount to the store's garden club. So it's got, if it just meets one of those two, so the quality rating or if it's being reordered. So we're going to use the or function. So we're going to make L5 the active cell. And we're going to come up to logical and come down to or. And now we're going to put our arguments in for our OR function. Um, if K5 equals A, and again, since it's a letter, we need to put quotation marks around the A. OR, the reorder indicator, so that's I5 equals y so again you want to put quotation marks around it because it's a letter and click ok and so then we're going to copy that down and fill without formatting so again this one quality rating is b but we're getting ready to reorder it therefore it's offered at a discount to our garden club. So you've now done the date function, the if function, the and function, and the or function, all without getting out a calculator. How awesome is that? Moving along, Jaden wants to uh, track some other details he wants to know how many number of items he has and so in column a he has the plant type so he wants to know how many plant types he has so we could actually count each row if we wanted to but imagine if this is a huge garden center you wouldn't be able to do that we actually have a counter um, function that counts the number of entries so I'm going to make c18 my active cell the count function is a statistical function so I'm going to come up here in my formulas with more functions and go to statistical and I'm going to come down here to count or you could just type in equal count start typing it in and it comes up but you don't get this nice little box when you do that and I like the little box um, we want to type in the range a5 through a15 
a5. I don't know why I always put an f instead of a5. And say OK. And it's going to count them for us. So we have 11 different types of plants. We want a formula that, that uh, lets us know how many we have on hand. So we've got all of these on hand figures here, but we want to know here in C19 our average. So we're going to come up here. Uh, more functions, statistical, we want average, and we want the average D5 through D15. And so that's the average of our items that we have on hand. The last thing we want to do um, is our average price. We want to take our retail prices and we want to know what our average price is, but we also want to round up. Now, when you're doing mathematical operations, you can, if you want to know exactly what your number is going to be, you can have all those different decimal places. And we could, on our home tab, you can increase and decrease the decimals, but it doesn't do any rounding up. It just makes them so you can't see them. We want to round up the different prices so that we know exactly what our average price is. So we're going to, this is going to be a two step average and then round up. So we're going to first do the average. So I'm going to go to formulas and then statistical. I'm going to do average and I want the average of F5 through F15. So that's $20.18. So, but I want to round up that average. So I'm going to come up here in my formula bar and I'm going to put my insertion point right in between the A and the equals. And I'm going to start typing in round up. And you can see I have the different options come up here. I want the round up and double click. And it automatically puts starts out with my parentheses. Now the number that we want to round up is the average of the range F5 to F15. So that's our number. So moving our insertion point after that parentheses, after F15, I'm going to enter in a comma because now I'm ready to enter in my second half of my argument. And I want the result up to one decimal place. And then I'm going to put a closed parentheses at the end of it. So I want the average, the round up, the average to one decimal place. And I'm going to hit the check mark to enter. And it's $20.20. .20. So there's a two cent difference between just averaging the retail prices and rounding them up. So I'm finished with everything. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close Excel. I'm going to go back to my Mind tab. I'm going to submit it. I'm going to hit Continue, Submit. I'm going to find that document. Open and submit. Let's see what we did. I'm going to view my report. And I got 100 out of 100. So um, hopefully you did too. If you didn't, look over your report and see what you need to make changes to to uh, get in there and get your highest score possible.